Hi, everyone. Uh, we are here to talk about NumerBlox, which is a Python library we built to address some core issues we had over and over again building NumerI pipelines. And we found it to be particularly effective. It's really increased our productivity. So we've decided to open source it. So hopefully everybody can get those same benefits and also contribute. So who are we? Why are we even here today? We are a small company called CrowdSense. Uh, and we have this big, broad goal of decentralizing investment management. And so with that goal, it's not too surprising that we've gravitated towards NumerI, where Carlo and I have been longtime participants anyway. Uh, and, and so in decentralization, one of the core properties is composability or interoperability, which is the idea that you can borrow or build upon some of the best aspects of a, a protocol or a platform. NumerI has really enabled that here. Uh, they've decomposed the signals generation process from the portfolio construction and trading process of a hedge fund so that we can actually kind of create hedge fund Legos, which is a term we've borrowed from DeFi where they have money Legos. And hedge fund Legos are basically stacked hedge funds. Uh, and that's what we did. We put a hedge fund on top of a hedge fund. Uh, last year, we went out to accredited investors and we raised a bunch of Numeraire uh, for the fund. And the fund's sole objective is to maximize the amount of Numeraire in it. It's fully denominated in Numeraire, which our accountants have confirmed is quite unique. Um, <laughs> and so we've been running that and it's been going quite well. Uh, another tenant of Decentralization is network effects. Here we're talking about financial network effects. So this decomposition that NumerI made has basically made this whole process a non-zero sum game. So we all can work and learn together and that's the hope. That's why we're opening open sourcing uh, NumerBlox in the first place. Hopefully we can make more code contributions. We can make COE donations and just continue to, to share what we learn on the forums with places like this. Uh, and then lastly, if, if NumerI is going to be the last hedge fund on Earth, I think they will probably need more teams, more DAOs, more institutions, more companies building on top of it. So also, if anyone is interested in doing something like this, we're more than happy to help and talk and get you set up. So that provides a little bit of, of context for why we built NumerBlox in the first place. We build a lot of NumerI models, and we have to make sure it's done properly and it runs every week. So what does what we needed was this uh, production-ready framework for inference pipelines that will run every week. We needed to rapidly iterate uh, building models and consistently evaluating those models. And then once we built the models, we need to combine them. Uh, and there are a bunch of feature processing and post-processing techniques that we wanted to also combine together. The best way to do that that we found was to abstract the NumerI process into building blocks. And we built this all with a data science first mindset. Uh, it might be appalling to some of the software engineers, but we did this all in Jupyter Notebooks using a, yeah. I, nice, that's actually, that's good to hear. Uh, it's a great framework. Um, and, and the idea is we are data scientists, so it's built by data scientists for data scientists, so everyone can focus on what's really adding the most value to NumerI, which is building models. Uh, the other cool thing about MBDev is that it lets you have coding, documentation, and testing all in, in one place. So this, this might look a little bit daunting at first, but we can break it down into the parts or, or the blocks, hence Numer blocks. Um, so like with every, actually, so the blocks will work uh, stand alone, or they can work stacked all together. Uh, and then each component also will work for classic or signals. We'll start with the downloader, which is, is kind of self-explanatory. It'll just download the data. That will go into a new data structure we made called the Numer frame, which is aware of things like era, features, predictions, targets. Then kind of the, the magic and the creativity happens in this dotted line box. Uh, which we call the model pipeline. It consists of preprocessors, an example being like an error quantiler. That's a common, I guess, transformation you would use in signals where you want to group by error and then 
quantile uh, all the features within that error. Um, next, you'd pass that data on to a model. So this is what you'd already be familiar with, Keras, XGBoost, whatever. It can even be like a whole sklearn pipeline. Um, and then from there, you would want to pass the predictions into a post-processor. The, the feature neutralizer is probably the, the most famous numeri one. Um, and it can get like arbitrarily complex. You can stack these, you can have predictions going into multiple post-processors, uh, and it, this is part of the experimentation and why it's helped us uh, find new models and, and cool processes. So then after you have some pipelines, you'll want to evaluate how the models do. So we have the evaluator object, and if you're happy with the results, then you would pass that to the submitter object, which is just kind of like helper code. You pass in all your model names, which prediction columns belong to which, and it uh, will quickly send those into Numeri. And uh, since Carlo was the one who actually built all this, he can dig into some of the, the objects. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, so there's one specific component that you would like to highlight because it can avoid uh, writing a lot of the boring uh, boilerplate codes and therefore also a lot of bugs, and it leverages the unique structure that Numeri data has. So, for example, we always have this error column or like the Friday date with uh, Numeri signals, and you often want to group by or slice and chunk or get batches based on this error, and the Numeri frame leverages this. Like, it recognizes the error column, um, and uh, yeah, you can use it throughout the framework. And additionally, yeah, all feature names are prefixed by feature, the same as for target, and we adopt the convention for uh, predictions. So um, yeah, knowing this property, we can easily get feature target splits or uh, yeah, chunks of uh, data, of batches. Also, we added the option to um, add arbitrary metadata to uh, the number frame, so this can be convenient to um, manage your data sets, uh, training and validation, or just pass whatever you want uh, for um, inference pipelines. And you can initialize the number frame uh, directly, just like you would with a data frame, and all the pandas operations are still there. Or we have this create meta frame where um, it automatically recognizes the format, like CSV or Parquet. And there were some interesting discussions on uh, getting only like the, the columns you want, so we can also extend this uh, to support that. Yeah, a little note on uh, MBDEV that uh, Jason mentioned. Like in the early 80s, uh, computer scientist uh, Donald Neuf envisioned this uh, literate programming where writing code becomes more like uh, writing a story, so you have the documentation, the source code, and the tests uh, in one place. And then MBDEV allows you to easily uh, export this uh, testing pipeline, uh, generate the documentation, and do two-way synchronization to the source code, which can be packaged and released. And also um, conflict resolution, uh, because yeah, notebooks can be like an inconvenient format. So why am I telling you all this? Like we hope that it becomes easier for people to uh, contribute, because yeah, we da data scientists are uh, often used to working with uh, Jupyter notebooks a lot. So what is next for newer blocks? Now we have this uh, initial uh, open source release. Uh, Mike Oliver presented uh, a true contribution earlier today and that uh, new feature neutral correlation and its interaction with exposure dissimilarity are like good proxies for true contribution. So we want this into our evaluator objects as soon as possible. And I have this implemented, we just have to uh, release it soon. And we've been talking with the creator of uh, Numa Bay, which is an online marketplace for uh, buying and selling uh, predictions and also signals data. So we want to support, uh, yeah, easily submitting um, uh, these bot predictions and easily downloading the signals data that you buy from uh, Numa Bay. And we believe that um, natural language processing become a very important part of um, Numa signals. So we want to support this throughout the framework. That can mean like a downloader to get text data from a news API or uh, preprocessors to generate an embedding or a sentiment prediction, and then models for the people who have this end-to-end uh, -end, uh, 
transformer pipelines. Uh, additionally, there's been a lot of talk on uh, generating uh, synthetic data, uh, for example, with uh, Gaussian mixture models. And like now we have this uh, NUMA frame and this common interface for preprocessors. We can just extend the NUMA frame so you can generate uh, a synthetic batch uh, of data or preprocessors to do this. And uh, yeah, last but not least, we at CrowdSense, we have experimented a lot with um, autoencoders, which can also be trained uh, unsupervised or self-supervised. And when you do it in this way, it basically becomes a feature engineering uh, step. So we can make preprocessors to support um, these autoencoders. And uh, to get started, uh, a pip install new blocks, uh, check out the GitHub uh, repository where you also find more information on contributing and a link to the documentation. And we also have a dedicated Numeri community rocket chat channel where people can uh, discuss, suge make suggestions, or uh, file bugs. And uh, yeah, because this is the crazy world of finance, we also have to show you this, last but not least. And uh, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So, you know, that I used to use uh, MATLAB a lot for, for different things, so I got a strange Twitter handle. Uh, I used to be a civil engineer as well, so, but I learned something about data science um, online, so thanks to Cargo and different learning resources. Uh, so if you are thinking about you know, trying to move away from your current career to become a data scientist, I think you can do it because I'm not that smart. I could do it, you could do it. So somehow I joined a company called H2O.AI. It's an AI company. Uh, but I also love doing this, so 360 uh, photo. Uh, so because I've been doing this for, for many years, people kind of forget about my real job. So they think about me as a photographer at H2O.AI, which is something I want to do it right now with you. So I got this thing here, that, this stick here. This is not the thing from MIB, or Man in Black. So when I click this button, don't worry, you can still remember your way home, so don't worry about it. Um, we also have, like, a, I, I'm from the UK, so we have this GDPR, so uh, about your data privacy. I don't, I don't know whether you want me to uh, take a picture, but if you don't want to take a, a picture with me, you can just duck when I press the button, all right? So I'll take a few shots. So. You can do all kind of crazy thing in the background, all right? Ready? Okay, thank you. So usually th my job is done at this point. <laughs> Let me find my control again. Uh, I kind of lost it in my pocket. Here we go. So I want to talk about something I did for the community uh, for the last two years. Uh, Okay, most importantly, this is only my own opinion, right? You know, this is not uh, about my job, it's not about Numerai, it's only about the things I do as a hobby outside of work. You know, it's important to say that uh, because maybe my boss is watching. Um, so back then, when I first started uh, uh, doing Numerai, the, I could only have one or three models at most. And then as, at some point, they increased the model slot to 10, I think. But it was difficult for me to to look at my own model's performance, even with just three to 10 models. So I figured out there's an API to, um, to pull data from, from every model, so I could do it myself. So I decided to build this simple dashboard. So uh, on the y-axis, you can see is the correlations plus uh, MMC, and on the x-axis is the one number. So basically, it's the model performance over time, something similar that you can see on the model page now. But what I did is that uh, I want to see how other people are doing at the same time. So I put it in the max, the mean, um, the 25th and 75th percentile, so I can actually see how myself and my models compare to others, as well as the, the benchmark model, which is called the um, integration underscore test. So with this, I can easily look at the performance of my model you know, during different kind of regime. So we can see that sometimes my models are doing better than others, and there are other times that they actually suck. So, but this is, this is important. This is like a, the real feedback loop. 
that you can actually look at from time to time and then you kind of adjust your, your stake on different models. And that's quite important. Uh, maybe the new user today, when they join Numerai today, you may not notice the difference because you already have something cool um, on the website to compare your own model. But we didn't have that kind of luxury back then, so I decided to do it on my own. But at this point, it's, this dashboard is just, oh, it was just useful for myself because well, unless you are really interested uh, in my models, you wouldn't look at my performance, right? So I team up with another guy, so uh, Shiland, he is, I think he's in Belgium. So what I did is that I still, I keep collecting the data uh, from the data scores and I threw it into a CSV file. I put it on GitHub so Silen, he can take this CSV and fit it into his, uh, his web application. So at this point, this become like a community dashboard so everyone can just go to this website, uh, compare their own models as well as any other models you know, at different, from different time periods. So I would say this is like a really nice example of a John's community effort. So this is like my first like real contribution for um, Numerite. I also got some uh, data for you uh, because I added um, Google Analytics to, to the uh, dashboard. So I can see that um, this number, I cannot verify this number, right? But, so we don't, you shouldn't take them too seriously. But at least I, I would say that over the last two years, hopefully this dashboard ha has helped some of you. Uh, I kind of bring this to the, um, the all the numerities around the world over the last two years. Uh, but we have uh, the TC coming and the MC, MMC is going away. So maybe uh, at some point next week, I will have to retire this for a bit. So I'm going to make some changes, put in TC and other stuff together, and then I will you know, create a new one uh, later on. So this is like a, a slide to sum up my first contribution to the community. And I want to um, go for the next one, which is um, less technical, but a lot more fun. So this is what I really do right now for, for Numerai. So my models are there, okay, they're stable, so I kind of leave them running for now. Uh, but in my spare time, I like to do memes because uh, I couldn't do this for my day job. Uh, it's just you know, a bit too casual for, for uh, H2. But I can do it here. So I want to thank you. I want to thank this community because you give me this unique opportunity to express myself with memes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So I believe that sometimes means can be a way of effective communications, not to some limit. So I want to show, share with you today three examples. This is the, my, um, I think it's my favorite, uh, and it's actually quite useful. So how do you explain Numerite to someone else? How do you explain the matter model uh, to someone who are not familiar with you know, AI, machine learning, all the stuff? Use this meme, just this, okay? Um, so why? Uh, I think it's just like all the crazy characters in, the, in this meme here. We all have different opinion, we have different models, we have different kind of like feature engineering, selection, uh, all that stuff. We have different kind of um, uh, signals coming out from our models. But if Numerai can you know, kind of combine everything together and if everything points to some the same signals, there's a good chance that we may have to find something special, meaning the other. And this, because uh, we also have the, the staking uh, mechanism here, so the, um, the feedback loop is real, because I got burned, so I know that it's real, so it's, it was painful. Um, so we kind of improve it from time to time. This meta model will auto-correct itself uh, from time to time. So as uh, Richard pointed out in his uh, recent Medium uh, article, so this is like the, a constant signal rejuvenation. Uh, just for, for your information, I got a stickers about from, from this meme, but because I, I ordered the, the meme's stickers before the Medium article, so I don't have this version of the uh, meta model. You still have the old one though. So I'll put them out later on, on somewhere in this conference so you will find them. Okay, next one. Okay, this is about TC, um, true contribution. So we have been talking about this uh, for the whole day today, uh, even yesterday. Okay, so MDO here stands for Michael Oliver. Where's Michael? Here, okay. Oh, first of all, okay, this is just a joke. Okay, this is just a joke. <laughs> all right. 
So I want you to know that we, we love you, Michael. We love you. Uh, please don't come to the stage and smack in the face. Don't smack me. Right. Just in case, you know, in the night of a recent incident on, on TV, I, I just want to put it out there. So, okay, but, but I want, we are, what I really want to say is that I want to thank you and the rest of the team uh, for everything you guys did um, to guide us in the right directions. I know this is not easy. It's not a single thing that can point you to um, the best TC result, but it's a mix of different things, right? Uh, but what I really want to say with this meme is that we, you, you give us some tools, like the example of how to optimize uh, FNC and uh, TB. TB is top and bottom correlations. Uh, but still, to me, it, I'm, I'm the cat. I'm the cat here. So I'm still a bit puzzled by what I should do with my models. But, uh, but that also leads to my final slide and final meme of the day, which is this one here. Where are we now? So this, this meme is, uh, about my, is about my journey of Numerite uh, for the last two years. Uh, and I believe some of you may have the similar experience as well. So we start with um, correlation with a target. We try to optimize the model uh, for FNC, for MMC, and then we try to lower correlation with the meta model. And then we, we are very, very close to the next stage, which is high TC and then the super alien intelligence hedge fund. Uh, so we cannot stop now, we cannot give up right now. We should, uh, no one said it's going to be easy, but I'm super, super optimistic about you know, the next step uh, with Numerite. And I think together, if we work hard together, uh, we share different ideas, somehow I think we will get to um, this super intelligent uh, uh, hedge fund and send it to the moon, okay? And so this is like, uh, I, I want to, again, thank you for the team for uh, this platform, this, you know, this crypto and all the things here. I will say, I want to say, um, I like the con. <coughs> I mean, uh, I like the data science competitions uh, a lot. And, and that's it, that's for me. Uh, I also want to thank uh, John Taylor. John, where is it, Arbitrage? Somewhere here. I want to thank you for all the videos all the educational materials, everything, all the office hours, all the stuff you put out there. Because without your materials, I wouldn't be here to talk about Numerite today. So I want to thank you again. Oh, that's all for me.